I'm Sarah Richardson. Along with my husband, Alex, and our daughters, Robin and Fiona, we're taking on a whole new off-the-grid project. We bought a Victorian country classic, and my plan is to turn it into a sweet vacation retreat. A little tweak here, a touch up there. Oh, good one. And a dash of flip. And we've got a getaway haven. Our family is big on small town living. And when our friends and family come to visit, it's nice to offer them a home away from home during their stay. So upgrading this historic house to a modern vacation rental home is the best of both worlds. I get to honor the heritage of the region and visitors have a year-round country hangout. Alex and I love working together on a good project and we always have each other's backs. And then there's my other partner. We're kind of part co-worker. Seems like we're in this together. Part spouse. My two husbands. Part sibling. Uncle Tommy's not here. I just need your opinion. And part hive mind. Yes, I love it when we agree. Okay. <laughs> I gave myself six months to get this rental ready for the market. I designed a super simple addition that's going to give us an extra 1,500 square feet of living space. On the second floor of the addition, I thought I found a cheap and cheerful way of getting a floor to ceiling view in the principal bedroom. But as soon as my window was installed, one thing became perfectly clear. I can't see anything. I don't know that it matters how much it's gonna cost because right now, it's terrible. That was an expensive oops. Once I fixed it, the principal suite turned out to be as relaxing and luxurious as I hoped. To make every square inch count as a rental property, I even squeezed in a bunk room. Now this house will sleep eight. The main floor of the addition is where I'm putting a mud room, a powder room, and a living room. Oh, whoa, this is so big. Right? Wait, this is way bigger than I expected it to be. Look at this view. This opening is huge. Right? It's about crazy. about 14 feet. These windows are so big. You get so much natural light in here. It's amazing. But the yeah. ceiling's nice and high. You can see where they're going to end up. Now for the fun part, what it's all going to look like. The mudroom is going to have lots of storage space for coats and boots in the winter. A main floor bathroom is a welcome feature for any guest, so we've put a powder room right off the entrance. The living room is going to be lounge central. Because the neighbors on the north side are close, a full wall on that side of the house will give us all privacy. For me, nothing says chill hangout like a fireplace, so I need to find an option that doesn't break the bank. A set of glass doors here will give a great view of the beautiful barn, and in the summer, they'll lead you out to the deck and backyard. I mean, this is how it's gonna feel. Uh, this is not how it's gonna feel. It's gonna feel a whole lot warmer because well. right now I have a cold tushy. If we're gonna keep everyone's tushies warm and get off the grid, my minister of exteriors better get his into gear. So the cool thing about doubling the space here by adding this addition is we didn't double the energy that we needed to run it. In fact, we've actually reduced the amount of power that we need. Beautiful new airtight, super energy efficient vinyl windows and they last forever. They're super durable, which is great. Couldn't be better. The windows aren't just energy efficient. They also meet my standards for style and they're affordable. With all those savings, I splashed out in the living room and ordered these extra large doors. At $24,000, they are the single biggest splurge in the house. But this floor of the addition is a simple box. There aren't any architectural flourishes here. So I'm throwing most of my design budget into this one feature because I know having a wall of windows and the view of the barn will be worth it. The final piece de resistance of our off-the-grid plan? A fireplace. So the fireplace that I've chosen, it's gas, because I think that as much as I love a wood-burning fireplace, I think for rental, people like to take their remote and yeah. turn and it Yeah, and not on. everybody can burn a wood fire properly. <laughs> not everybody can light it, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want this whole thing built out. I think it'll look nicer if we have, you know, like a stone-clad box for the fireplace unit. I like that. This gas insert is great because it vents directly to the outside, which means no chimney and an inexpensive install. It has a slim contemporary profile that I can trim right up to for a crisp and modern look at an affordable price. For an added bonus, it runs off natural gas or propane, which means instant heat, ambiance, and a touch of romance for our renters. 
Now, time to get shopping. We're designing the living room around the view of the Century Barn. When I think of modern country, these are the colors that inspire me. This is my first outing to start looking for fabrics, and I need lots of different ones for the house. But I want things that are really easy living, practical. I want them washable, a little bit contemporary, a little bit fun. Price point is definitely a consideration, which is part of the reason why I'm shopping here, because they have really fun, fashion-forward fabrics that are offered at a great price point. This store is in my regular rotation. I can always find fabrics here with fresh style at a price that works. Nothing beats looking at samples in person, but their website does make it simple to shop from anywhere. Here, I can create the look I love, layering patterns and textures without completely blowing my budget for the living room. This is $13.95 a yard. What a great price. That's the amount I want to spend. Okay. I'd say that's a successful source for today. What is happening in here? How do you feel about this kind of cooler, barn-inspired palette? I'm crazy about that. I look at that as a fabric scheme, and I can see that we have something linear, something that's a small print that's more all over, something that's a bold gesture, something that's a solid but a nice texture, two options, light and dark. Like, this is a perfect fabric scheme. Yes, I love it when we agree. <laughs> On this job, I'm a maven of multitasking. Design the addition, check. Help manage the trades, track the schedule and the budget, check, check, and check. But I also run a design firm with a team that's working on projects across North America. There are plenty of days on site that I definitely don't need to be there. Like today, for the drywall delivery. Drive up, load it off, load it in, done. This should be a snap. But if there's a way to make things complicated, we'll find it. Well, we closed the boom up and it leaned against the tree here, and we got all the drywall in, but now the tree's in the way. Because whenever we drive out, if it does catch and swing back, it may hit the window. If they don't mind cutting the tree, we'll cut the tree to be safe. Feels like the guarantee on this project is that I'm never where I need to be. And here I am, trying to get stuff done at the office in the city. And meanwhile, there's a thousand things that I should be dealing with on site in Cremor. These guys had one job. Now we're all up a tree and the entire site comes to a stop while I get the call and say yes to get out of this mess. Any delay on a project is a waste of time and money. We've got to nip it in the bud. One thing is for certain, and that is that I just feel no matter where I am, no matter where I assign myself to be that day, it's the wrong place to be. A few months ago, Alex and I purchased a modest heritage home and we're transforming it into a luxury vacation rental. Holy Jesus. Our drywall are delayed. They were supposed to start Tuesday, which bumped to Wednesday. So I just texted Ed and I said, hey, how's it going with drywall? Because today be Thursday. Right, well. And I... he said, they're now coming to start Saturday. I've let them know they need to get moving. He got behind. We just lost four days in our schedule. Can I also add one other little detail? I think you got told Tuesday for drywaller so that all of your stuff would be ready, but actually I always heard it was Thursday. What do you mean it was supposed to be Thursday? I always heard it was Thursday. That's what the crew were telling me. Or are you not, no, 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 you're not typing that in. I am typing that in. I know, maybe to say I thought I had heard. Maybe, don't commit that, it's not good. Okay, I'll do that with him in person. <laughs> okay. I don't need people playing games with me on whether I'll be ready. I don't need fake deadlines. The next stop for Tommy and me, vintage shopping. What are we gonna find? Everything. If you're up for a little restoration, this is a perfect way to inject some old school charm into a modern space. You can't be doing that. No golfing? Do people just randomly golf? Hold your hat. <laughs> oh. Look at that, $10. That's $10. That's $10. I think that would be $10 well spent. That's good. Isn't that cute? Yeah, I love that. Shall actually, we? I like that look. What do you mean, actually like that look? Of course you like that look. I love these chairs. These are amazing. You know what these do? They swivel. And they rock. And they rock. You can often get better quality at a better price point with a more unique look when you buy vintage furniture. Can we afford them? How much are they? Oh, they're $4.75 the pair. For two? Yeah, they're less than $250 each. All they need is a cushion, a bit of paint. 
No, 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 I'm totally sold. We have to get these. Back in Creamore, the drywall is up. Now I want to share my DIY idea that's going to save us big bucks on custom banquettes around the fireplace. And you had said before that you wanted to maybe do bench seating from either side, extending to the walls. Yeah. So what I found is if we use a kitchen cabinet that would go above your refrigerator, okay. we can find a mattress designed for a toddler bed. We can use that as the cushion. You're a strange chick, Richardson. That's like a, let me think. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say, nobody's ever put a toddler mattress on a refrigerator cabinet up until now. That's why I'm gonna do it. It's a new idea. It's gonna be amazing. And then let's talk about here. To accommodate the powder room and give us the best usable floor area, the stairs to the basement needed to move into the center of the floor. To make sure no one falls down the stairs, I had a low wall built around them. Now, I've got a design challenge. If we're gonna have this built element here, this box, yeah. I want it to feel more like a building. Yeah. You know, and something that capitalizes on this kind of like width of this element, like the fact that it's long and low. What we do is we clad the exterior in MDF. Okay. And then we could do an applied panel detail. So we can make an interesting pattern. That you would then paint out. That we paint out. You've got your, your zone where you can come in, drop your bag, hang your coat. And then we've got two gray closets here. We'll have a nice stone floor. Yeah. And we kind of want to create that feeling of separation mm -hmm. between the two areas. A mudroom is a high traffic area, so I want it to be pretty and practical. Using stone instead of hardwood here will create a visual separation from the rest of the room. And I found an option that fits perfectly in this space. Only one thing stands in my way a strong opinion. I really feel like in the winter, people are gonna plow right through here and hang their coat up and not take off their shoes first like good little boys and girls. They're gonna go right to the closet. And that stretch of wood flooring that you have designated for that hallway is gonna get completely ruined. This is already 80 square feet of stone. What's more expensive, buying the stone, the extra stone now? Replacing the whole floor. <laughs> or replacing that strip of floor in two years? Well, you've thrown down what you think here. Oh, I know what's this right. This is what happens. You decide what's right, and then you make me feel guilty for if I don't totally 100% agree with you. I feel like we're at what's called an impasse. <laughs> That's a building term. I feel like we're at an I'll pass on making that decision right now. And then there are times when the best decisions are ones that take no time to make. I get asked to work on all sorts of different projects, and one day I got an email, and the request was to do a bedroom makeover for a teenage girl who has a life-threatening illness. And the reason that she wanted me to do her bedroom is that she's been a really big fan, and she's been watching my shows for a really long time. So that's kind of awesome, and I want to make sure she loves her bedroom. Hello. I'm Sarah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, Tara. And I'm Tommy. Hi. Scott, Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Okay. Do you want to give us a tour? Yeah. Okay. okay. You lead the way. We'll see you guys in a couple minutes. Sounds good. Now, a lot of people would say that this room's already pretty nice, but obviously, you want some changes. Mm-hmm. What yeah. kind of changes? Um, no more pink. Oh, it's pink, all right. Okay. When, can, how long I, ago did you do this? A couple years ago. Okay, a couple yeah. years ago, and was pink your favorite color back yeah. then? Okay, but I want to guess, if not pink, what color it's going to be. So let me try. Let me try to guess. Purple? No. Too close to the pink. I know what Sarah would want it to be. I have a lot of favorite colors. Your you favorite color is blue. Do you like blue? Yeah. I'm sensing here that we have a compatible match have a compa in terms we've, of we've designer and client, right? Sort client, of like designer. an ocean palette. Do you like yeah. an ocean palette? Okay, good. So you know what? This closet could be better organized. So you have a twin bed. Do you want a bigger bed? I want a double bed. Okay, yeah. who could blame you? Yeah. Do you want a desk? Yeah, I want to keep the desk. Okay. Hold on. Uh, desk or vanity? Because when I first met you, I'm like, she has amazing hair. So do you need yeah. more of a vanity slash desk rather than just a yeah, desk? Uh, I think she needs a desk slash vanity because She's focusing on her studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, you know, start slow with amazing hair. <laughs> okay. And you'll notice that you're feeling really good. And when you're feeling really good, you know, you're more in the mood to study, which will get you better grades. It actually starts with amazing hair. Now it's time for a proper design meeting. Now we're going to get down to business. This is the meeting. What do you what have is, there? What is this? It's a book for that I, like ideas that I like. I am so impressed. 
Allie's lookbook has all her design inspiration ideas in it, so we can get right down to discussing details. Ooh, yeah. Love the moody grays with the turquoise and this brighter blues. This is so blues. interesting. These coral tones with yeah. the aqua. Yeah. This is a very sophisticated combination of colors. There's a little bit of pink in there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still like pink or is pink on the band list? I like pink a little bit, but not too much of it. Not as much as is in there, which is a little intense. Yeah, okay. it's a bit intense right no, now. No, that's good. OK. Talk to me about this idea, the loft bunk. I like it, but my dog sleeps with me every night, so he can't get up there. We could get a trampoline that the dog would have to <laughs> bounce off of. Yeah. That would be so cool. I have to say, I think this is a fantastic presentation. Have you spent a lot of time putting this together? Yeah. You've done a great job. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right, shall we get to work? Yeah, I'm excited about this. Back in Cremor, all the trades are hard at work getting my luxury rental property finished. In my design plan for the living room, I've included benches with storage on either side of the fireplace. Built-ins would cost me over $3,000, so with the help of my daughter Fiona, I'm thinking inside the box. Some assembly required. Do you know what we're building here? Cabinet? Exactly. This prefab upper cabinet is designed to go above a refrigerator, but with a little imagination, we're creating custom benches with storage for a fraction of the price. Add in a little love, sweat, and tools, and you've got yourself a real steal of a deal. Why does it say we need a clamp? We need a pencil? Gee whiz, whatever. Where's the hardware pack? Yeah, just use me as a headrest. It's all good. You know what we're going to need? Ice cream. Uh, I was going to say quality control. Uh, yeah. These roomy kitchen cabinets are going to do a bang-up job in the living room. And now for my next magic trick. It's Fiona! What do you want to do now? Get ice cream. What flavor are you going to get? Maybe chocolate. Oh, maybe. Mmm. That's good. That there is the sound of money well saved. But just like that, my DIY savings could all be going up in smoke. My marble installer has found an issue. How are we feeling about this today, Mark? Well, um, I guess originally when he measured the floor wasn't in, right? So we have to recut them all. When Ed and I measured for the fireplace marble, the flooring hadn't been installed. Now the miter joint doesn't line up. To recut the marble, the slabs would have to be sent off site. That's going to cost time and money. Two things I hate wasting. But I think it's the only option. I don't think they can cut the floorboards neat enough no, they won't to allow you enough. to slide in, right. right? Should I just double check with Chris? Um, yeah, but. Let me ask Chris. If Chris can cut the floorboards to fit, it will be faster and more efficient. Fingers crossed he can do it. OK, so what do you think? So what is it, one piece that goes right across the bottom? Yeah. Um, yeah and the two sides. Yeah. Uh, I can cut up the floor. No pressure, Chris, but you have one shot at getting this right, or the marble and the floor will both need replacing. My team are the best problem solvers in the business. Thanks to Chris's steady hand, the fireplace looks perfect. I love it. It's going to be gorgeous. Wrap it up. OK? Yep, i got to go pay some bills. Besides things to do, I've got people to see. Actually, just one very important person. A national charity has paired me with a young fan to make her wish of a new bedroom come true. Allie gave me her lookbook to work from, and I pulled fabric and furniture samples I think she'll like. This is where professionals can save you time. We have sources, so we do all the legwork. I've done a little bit of research here okay. in terms of what Allie had said she liked. Yep, I love the bed options. Okay. They're fantastic. But we don't need a ton of fabric. Just before we overwhelm her by sending all of this, mm -hmm. should we pick some faves? Just for color reference, we might not use this exact pink pattern, but there is, I do like this notion of the corals with the blues. OK, Cor coral and aqua. Her, I think her color sense is pretty sophisticated. This is fun buttons. I feel like this is sort of the. Feels very 
Cool. Okay, so that's easy. So let's just sort it. Let's just do a quick sort, and we'll just send her the ones we think she might want to look at. Okay. Giving her enough opportunity to select on her own. Now it's time to plan the main floor powder room in my rental property. We can sleep up to eight people in this house, so we need all the extra bathrooms we can get. Renovation jobs like this generate a lot of scrap materials. Part of my off-the-grid plan is to reuse as much scrap as I can, so less goes into landfill and it keeps our costs down. I gave myself a challenge. Design this vanity using only what we already have on site. What I'm looking for here is the cheapest, simplest vanity known to mankind. That's going to look incredibly chic at the end. Well, let's just do that then. Let's just do that. Let's just do that, shall we? What do we have that's left over? Do we have a piece of siding that's left over? I feel like there's a piece of siding I saw out on the steps. Anything that works, I'll do a piece of remnant marble just as the backsplash. Okay. And then what I was thinking is just a strip. Like maybe it's a strip of leftover barn board that we just do as the little Across facer. Across the front? Yeah. Oh, so no marble in the front? No. Just keep it simple. Okay. Then we can install a towel bar that runs side to side. Like, simple. With our bathroom planned, Chris and I turn our attention to the low wall surrounding the basement stairs. I'm gonna take merely functional and turn it up to entirely fabulous. It's the perfect blank canvas to test out a new idea to use up scrap lumber. I put pencil to two by four and drew up a sketch. The problem with my sketch is we have pieces meeting at a right angle, mm -hmm. which will cause a problem because if they don't align perfectly and miter, then that's gonna look weird. However, what if we did this wall like this, right? Mm -hmm. Hold that for a sec. And then this wall goes this way. Yeah. And this wall goes this way. And then nothing looks like it should miter perfectly. That'll be an easier install. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. This is just like a wing it DIY. Mm -hmm. Or a YDI, as Tommy calls it. I'm going to dream it myself, and then you do it. YDI. Like that? Awesome. Like that. I like it. Our guests will want to veg out at the end of a long day spent exploring the area, but I don't love the look of a TV dominating the living room. So I came up with an elegant solution to run past Tommy. I found an online art site that inspired me to think of a way to feature these great photos while concealing the television. In the living room, we have a television going on the wall. But what I was thinking is, maybe we could make it so we don't have to look at the television all of the time. Mm -hmm. So we could actually frame eight images together, and then we can put a piano hinge in between them. Okay. So that they become like a pair of shutters that bifold and open, but then you can discreetly close them. That would be amazing if it works. Like, it yeah. sounds like a complicated situation. Not complicated. If it's executed really, really well, it'll be a triumph. I invested in a small town Victorian that I'm transforming into a luxury rental property. We designed an addition to give this classic heritage home a contemporary feel while providing lots of space for our prospective guests. With everyone working on site, I check in with Allie, my teen client, whose dream bedroom we're turning into a reality. Hi, how are you? Good. Did you get the package, most importantly? Yeah, I got all the Fabrics. Okay, and did you like any of them? I like the chevron. Oh, yes, that's a good choice. So I like the flamingos. Aren't they fun? I saw that you have been busy looking at stuff on our idea board. Yeah. So I think you and I have the same favorite bed, the painted wood one. Mm -hmm. What about a bedside table? There's one that was called Antonina. Yeah, I like that because it's just a little bit of I thought you'd like a little bit of gold, and I think that would look really great with the desk that you found, well chosen. That seems like a really nice combination. I like the poof you found. And I see yeah. you found some artwork and some great wall hooks and a comfy throw. You've been busy. Yeah. Well, it all looks... I've been doing that at school because I've done one class, so I did it Okay, well, I'm envious of you because when I was a kid, if I didn't have anything left to do at school, you know what I had to do? I had to sit there. I couldn't online shop and I couldn't design a bedroom. So this is great. I think I've got what I need 
and uh, I think it's time to get ordering. Meanwhile, back at the Reno, the tile impasse is a thing of the past. I really feel like in the winter, people are gonna plow right through here and hang their coat up. I feel like we're at what's called an impasse. <laughs> Ultimately, I decided to stick with my vision and only tile the mudroom area. Now, before the pattern is set in stone, I want to make sure it's lined up just right. What is my goal all the time? Full tile at the front door is Full your goal. Full tile at the front door, but also the easiest install for the best result. We could stagger it or okay. we stack it. What do you think is going to be better? I feel like this might be nicer. The uh, brick pattern? Yeah. I like the contemporary look, the stacking. But here's um, the problem. If we stack it yes. like this, follow the line, and when you come in the front door, yes, all... you're going to be on a grout line right here. Whereas if we stagger it, the staggered one is almost centered on the front door so that when you open it... Yes, you're standing on a full tile. This is the kind of detail that is worth taking the time to get perfect. It costs nothing to do it, and the result is a visual symphony that will greet my guests every time they open the door. What color grout are we using? Dark-ish, not black, gray. Gray, to match gray. the tile? Yeah. So we're gonna try and hide the joints? Yeah. Okay, so I would say this is good. You would do this thing? Offset, yeah. And then do we offset these pieces? Do we center these we'll center, pieces? We'll center them. Great. I think that's our goal. Okay. I think it'll be sharp. Sharp. Sharp like is what contrast. we like. And all it takes to get sharp is focusing on the details. Details are what it's all about at this stage. And there's one I hadn't considered with the frame I designed to conceal the television. Now what's the problem? So remember the great idea, remember the black and white photographs? Yes. In a grid, all together, right. so they, they hide Folding the TV. and they open. Yeah, so like I was accordion. having Yeah, so I was explaining this amazing idea okay. to my husband, okay. who's in charge of buying all the stereo equipment, and mm -hmm. he said, so they open up and they fold back. And I said, hmm, isn't that cool? And he's like, right in front of the speakers? Doors open, can't hear. Doors closed, can hear, can't see. That's a really <laughs> huge problem. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes husbands and wives should talk more. Well, that presents a bit of an interesting discussion because it's sort of like who wins, the design or the tech. So I've been married for 13 years and in this relationship for almost 19. Yeah. I've been there the whole time, I know. It's good not to just assume that design always wins. OK, what's the fix for this? Like, can't we just lower the speakers? That's a good option I never thought of. I can definitely ask Alex. Because How's your deck building going? Deck building is going brilliantly. Brilliantly? OK. Yeah. So I'm not feeling quite so brilliant since you and I had the conversation about my gorgeous artwork opening and folding back right on top of the speakers. Yes. Well, it depends. If you like their sound of a then you're fine. No. Yeah. OK. We don't want that. So my question is, mm -hmm. Tommy's workaround is, we were wondering, could the speakers go here? Sure they can. Oh. What? You're so smart. Oh my god, can I go home now? I had one good idea today. Every day is packed full. Today, everyone on site has a project to work on without me, so I can sneak in a day off. Don't worry, I'm still going to get creative. The kids don't have school today, and I thought it would be really fun for us all to do a craft project together. <coughs> How about we do some tie-dye? Sure. Yes? Sure? Yes. Sure? Yeah. Yes. As the kids get older, it's fun to do more adventurous projects. Oh, yeah. You know what? This is definitely more fun than being at work. Just do me a favor. Don't tell anybody at work that this is what I'm doing. It's looking like it's going to get messy. Whoa, Robin, way too much. Paper towel. Did you dump Paper it Paper towel. Jeez, oh, Robin. I made a mess. OK. Just a reminder that this is quite a white kitchen, and this is dye. Mommy, Permanent dye. Whose bright idea was this, anyway? Yep. Sorry for ruining your kitchen. These are the special moments that I love because we don't get to do it enough. I think our wardrobes are about to get a lot more colorful. So a day like this is super special and I'm gonna savor every minute. Oh, whatever. <gasps> wow! wow. Smile. Do you love it? It's so cool. Look That's at your awesome! Screen. Whoa! Wow. wow! That looks like one daddy would definitely wear. That's polka dot painterly. That's incredible. Oh my, it's so pretty. 
Whoa! Wow, that's a sunburst that thing. Is, it's like a it. California oh, sunset. Smile. Love them. Is this a good way to spend a day? Yeah. I'll skip going to the office any day to do this with you. Wow. Should we do another one? Yeah. yeah. This is the kind of fun that's to tie-dye for. The living room in my small town rental home is coming together. We picked cool gray tones for the living room to highlight the barn colors out the window. But we're surrounded by trees on this property and I want to celebrate the greenery. I thought of a natural place for this bold color and our resident paint expert, Steve, is here to help. It's a powder room. Be daring. You're only going to see it when you're inside. Right. Tommy always says you're in the powder room for a good time, not a long time. Therapeutic green or pasture green? Well, if you're going to do it, go for it. Right? Yeah. Let's go for it. I feel like this is a true Irish green. Tommy is literally in Ireland right now. I feel like if I were to send him this color, he would love it. Looking so at those leaves out there, therapeutic they're, green. It's, it's therapeutic. It's therapeutic. <laughs> and the powder room. Steve and I are standing in a powder room talking about this things is, that are therapeutic. This is you the know only why. time we'll be in here together. <laughs> yeah, or we'll both need therapy. <laughs> We head to Allie's house to wrap up her wish for a new bedroom makeover. With floors and trim replaced, painting done, and wallpaper hung, we're here to bring in the furniture and finishing touches. We have a lot of work to do in Allie's bedroom. We have about three and a half hours until she comes home from school. And the expectation is that this room is going to be completely done and ready to be revealed to her. Hey, I've got the headboard. Patented move, the downward designer. Ooh, look how plush it is. That's nice. You like that? I know what you're thinking. I should have waited until mm -hmm. we were ready, but I'm eager. I love it when the plan comes together. When Allie arrives home, I can't wait to surprise her with her vision come to life. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How was your day at school? Good. So I came out to check on things, and I just wondered, do you want to go in with me and see how it's coming together? Yeah. Okay. Come on. Oh. This room has all the features a teen needs, with space to work, hang out, and sleep. You've been so patient, and we wanted to come here and get this done for you. Allie chose new wallpaper, and we brought in the colors Allie's always liked in a more sophisticated way. One of the simplest ways to give a room design interest and charm is to bring in family heirlooms. But here's the secret. They don't have to be from your family. This is a vintage light fixture from Italy. A few months ago, I got a really nice email mm -hmm. from a woman. She was moving, and she said, I would like it if I could give it to you, and you could give it a good home. So this is a gift from her through me to you. And as we were putting this together, all I could think was, what a great designer you are. Because we really followed what you asked for yeah. and what you wanted. We think. But did mm -hmm. we get it right? Yes. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Oh. But you can't wait to sleep on that bed. <laughs> jobs like Allie's are why I love what I do. While I was away, things in the living room have been making huge strides. Our stair surround has been painted and the pattern crisp YDI'd looks great. The cabinets Fiona and I put together have been clad in lumber and painted. Instead of pricey custom cushions, I used toddler sized mattresses and gave them washable slip covers. Now we've got sturdy benches with lots of storage on either side of the fireplace. We're so close to the finish line, I can't imagine what could go wrong. How's it going? We're fine. So, we're not. Yeah. Maybe I spoke too soon. My idea was to use these framed prints as hinged shutters around the television. Alex moved the speakers so they wouldn't be blocked, but now we have a fresh new problem. Um, these look amazing on this side. So good, right? So good. Don't you love? Yeah. And then on this side, we just have a little bit of a problem. Now, 
before yeah. you freak out. No, I'm not gonna freak out. I know, you don't tend to freak out. I'm just saying before inside, you ha yeah, before you do that on the inside, in defense of Dave, he said the only way to make these things, to give them the integrity they need to be able to hang on hinges yeah. and move, he had to do this. Yep. Yeah. So. It's the inside. You're not really supposed to look at them. So, okay, what's next? We're pretty sure that some of them might be a slightly different size than others. Not sure how that happened, whether it was in the cutting that we did or in the framing that they did. In order for this idea to work, it needs to be executed perfectly. But the frames are the wrong size, and now the doors won't close. So far, I've spent $2,000 printing and framing these photos, and if we can't make this work, that money has been wasted. I might never, ever, ever, never put another TV in a living room for so long as I live, because this might now be the most expensive TV ever known to mankind. I have bought eight pieces of original art, custom framed them, made a box, all this just to disguise the TV. You know what, from now on, if you want TV in the living room, hey, have a TV, that's what it looks like. The key to solving most design problems is a good night's sleep. With fresh eyes, we tackle the framed art problem again, and Chris has a simple solution. So what do you think? Uh, I think I can fix it, and I think it's going to be fairly easy. Really? Instead of reframing the pictures, which would cost me a ton, he's going to enlarge the television surround so that all the frames will fit. This is a great solution. Now that's thinking inside the box. If you think it's going to be fairly easy, I'm willing to give it a go, because so far I've invested about $2,000 in this, and abandoning it makes me really sad. Don't abandon it. The guys that did the picture frames made them slightly bigger than they were supposed to be, so four of them together ends up being a half inch too big. I'm gonna make the frame bigger on the outside and make them look good. That's a neat fix and chill. We're almost at the finish line in our seasonal rental home living room, but there's one final hurdle. One of the biggest challenges in any renovation is scheduling. It's scheduling the trades to be here at the right time, trying to make sure that everything happens in a logical order, trying to make sure that you have as little wasted time as possible, and trying to make sure that you hit your end goal. When you order sizable items like a sofa, a sectional, you need to schedule the delivery. So I scheduled these deliveries. I told everybody that they were coming this morning. I told everybody the site had to be ready and clean, and I walked in, and nothing is ready. Like, not close to ready. So I'm getting the vacuum, and we're gonna get this place clean, and we are gonna be ready for this delivery, whatever it takes. Sometimes, you just gotta suck it up. To death. This is the biggest chair I've Who's ever seen. Who's this stuff? Uh, by the way, I do <laughs> think these are the most enormous chairs I've ever sat in. This is like the lazy teenager. It's like a day hey, bed. mom, give yes. me another cola. Yeah. Come on. My rental home mudroom powder room and living room are finally complete. Tommy and I sit down to reflect on the design process. I think it's safe to call this house a large project. This was take it back, build it new, and here it is. The inspiration for this room was the barn in the backyard. I wanted guests to sit in this space and take in all the beautiful sight lines. But it's not just pretty, it's also practical. You need a stone pad at the entry. And taking that just simple gray and elevating it one notch with those bands of black. Perfect. 
and not expensive. Since these are affordable, large-scale tiles, I didn't need a lot of them, and the install was pretty simple, so I was able to save on labor costs. I stuck with my gut instinct to end the tiling before the closet, and I think it looks great. Every house is about telling stories. And when somebody says, oh, why did you choose that color for the powder room? Because I was mad I wasn't in Ireland. <laughs> yeah, you'll have, you'll have a funny answer. Because I was jealous that Tommy was in Ireland and I was on a construction site, that's why. So that is a remnant piece of marble. Love that, Vanity. Sitting on two by fours as support with a little backsplash. This bathroom is green all over. Thanks to the low flow bathroom fixtures and recycled lumber, we hit all three R's. Reduce, reuse, relax. One of my favorite things in this room is the stair surround. This design detail turned out beautifully, and it's made out of scrap lumber, so it literally cost nothing to do. This is so good. Like, I love that. I'll be repeating that. Oh, totally. So unbeatable, it's repeatable. These benches, for instance, such a good idea. Custom built-ins would have cost a mint. My solution was repurposing prefab cabinetry, framing them with lumber, and topping them with a toddler bed cushion. I covered the cushion with inexpensive fabric and added some deep, loungy, textured pillows to get the layered look I love. Final result? Stunning seating that saved hundreds of dollars. This is a ski area. So you want to come in for Apres Ski and warm your hands at this fireplace. It's perfect for that. The fireplace is what makes this room, and it helps to heat the rest of the house. It's an investment worth making. This television surround turned out to be more of a splurge and a lot more work than I thought it would be. Maybe we could make it so we don't have to look at the television all of the time? That would be amazing if it works. Like, it sounds like a complicated situation. Not complicated. Turns out, we were both right. It took a few tries, but in the end, I love how it looks, and I would definitely do it again. How do I want to feel in the country? Well, I'll tell you, I want to be in a rocky chair right? next to a fire. I want a comfy sofa. I want to be surrounded by amenities, and I want to watch TV. This room has everything you need. Nothing you don't. And nothing you don't. Sarah Richardson. I've got a passion for everything old and new. I actually don't think I've ever seen that before. Well, I know I've never done it before. I brought my husband Alex and our daughters Robin and Fiona along to tackle my latest project. I snagged an adorable heritage home on Main Street, and I'm transforming it into a year-round vacation getaway. I'm taking this space from worn out to knockout as we go off the grid again. Here's what I know about renovations. They're dirty. They're expensive. I want to do this as cost effectively as possible. <laughs> really? But there are those moments that make it all worth it. You're so smart! And when you're renovating to create a rental and stay on budget, there's a lot more at stake. This has to look amazing when I'm done, but it can't break the bank. And if it's gonna be a rental property, it has to be good quality to stand the test of time. I bought this thousand square foot home in my favorite small town with a plan to turn it into a dream vacation property. So far, I've more than doubled the square footage with the addition and have completely transformed the second story. to the heart of every home. And we're starting at zero with the tiny, outdated kitchen and dining room. Some people walk in and all they see is the before and they can't see past it. And when I walk into a before, all I see is the after and I see the potential. My plan for the kitchen and dining room is all dependent on whether we can take down these interior walls. We won't know if that's possible until we've got the lath and plaster stripped off. So it's demo time and my daughters, Robin and Fiona, have their hammers at the ready. Let's wreck some stuff. Wreck it! Whoa! Nice! That's 
Nice way to swing, girl. Woo! Look at that, girls. You can see the light coming from the other room. It makes me so happy and so proud to see Robin and Fiona swinging hammers. All right. Look at these girls go. Like, they are rocking it. Now let's see what my trusted contractor, Ed, has to say about opening this room up. Oh, yes! Looking good! I love demo! OK, talk to me about walls. What have we, what have we determined? Well, now that we've got a lot of the lath and plaster off, we're starting to see what is load-bearing and what isn't. So this wall here, it it's can go. It's just a partition wall, not doing anything. Look at that. Like, look at the light coming in. Now we're going to be able to appreciate this old staircase. But this wall here, this will be bearing weight from all these floor joists upstairs in these bedrooms. They'll be sitting right on this wall. So this one will have to stay, or we can put a beam in across. So what you're thinking is, if we put a beam, like let's say we're to put a beam that runs all the way across here. Yes. We, at some point, we have to drop it down on a post so it connects with our brick wall that's our supporting wall in the basement, right? Only at the two ends. Oh, we don't even have to put it in the middle? No. Fine by me. Like, I'm completely cool with that. I just, I like the feeling of it being open. So if we can avoid having a post here and a post there, and we can get this corner open, I think that's the game changer for this whole space. Definitely. I've literally seen the light, and we are on our way to creating an awesome open concept home for modern living, and I am psyched. With the interior walls down, I can finally take a look. I feel no kitchen can ever be too big. I tend to use my kitchen to cook a lot of meals. I cook dinner almost every night. But a kitchen isn't just about meal prep and cleanup. A kitchen is about having this hub of the house that offers so many more functions. It's a craft area. It's a homework space. It's an entertaining space. It's for gathering. It's for lounging. It's for connecting. It's for researching, looking up recipes. And it's for cooking. Here's the thing. Everyone wants an open plan living space, but kitchens can get cluttered with pots, pans, and stuff. So my challenge in designing these rooms is making the most of the open space while also keeping potential mess out of the way and making it gorgeous. I don't want to do a custom kitchen. I've already looked online and I've mapped it out. And I think if I do this right, I can spend less than $10,000 on the cabinetry. That's my goal. These are north-facing windows looking into the neighbor's house. By closing these windows up, we have total flexibility about how to reprogram this wall. I'm going to put the fridge and stove here to keep them out of the direct eye line from the dining room. Because this is an exterior wall, the vent hood above the gas stove can vent directly outside. That means no unsightly bulkheads concealing the ductwork. A, a big island is a key aspect of any kitchen that I like to work in. I'm thinking 10 and a half feet long. The sink and the dishwasher will be about here. So it's easy access from the dining room, great cleanup from the work area here, sort of the prep and cook area. And then what I'm thinking is over on this side, I'm going to have some high cupboards. So these cupboards will sit above the counter height. They'll be more like bar height. And this will create sort of like a china cabinet so you can open the doors and serve right onto the table. The other benefit of the raised cabinet is that it can mask any dirty dishes in the sink behind it. There will be a breakfast bar on this corner. We'll have enough room for three stools along the side and then two on the end. And this is so nice because it makes it more conversational. Instead of having everybody lined up in a row, you can have a wraparound. So you can actually sit and have a meal here. Then we've got this long wall. And what I'm planning is a 30-inch pantry that'll go up each end here. And they'll go all the way to the top. And then a long run of cabinetry here. We'll have a bar sink. We'll have a bar fridge. And then no uppers here. This will be the feature wall, so I want to find a great piece of statement art to fill the space. The dining table will provide seating for 10, and it'll be nestled right by this beautiful bay window. We have a new main entrance in the addition, so this door will become a window. Plus, I've got room for a seating area over here. So lounge space, comfy. This is a great place to have coffee, work on a laptop, have a glass of wine while you talk to the cook. Like, look at all these different amazing zones. Honestly, how can you not think this is a great plan? 
My partner in design, Tommy, has seen my plan on paper, but now it's time to see it in real life. Oh, whoa, this is huge. It's so big. Can you believe it? I actually can't believe it. This is amazing. I can't believe you got all those walls up. Great ceiling height, incredible arch height. So we got rid of the old ceiling because what we realized is there's no sound insulation whatsoever between the two floors. Right. We needed, if we have to make any HVAC changes, it was going to make it really difficult because everything was running on the inside of the walls, just these nasty pipes. Sure. And lastly, electrical. If we want to add any new fixtures, yeah. it was going to get tricky. So we took down the ceiling, and now they've been working on leveling it all off. It looks all really well done and well supported. This was the only one that we had to reinforce. We went with a laminated veneer lumber beam because it's faster to get and install than a steel I-beam. So we've got four two by sixes supporting a beam. We had the whole thing engineered and we're good to go. This is such a contemporary amount of open space. This is huge. The lifestyle that this kind of open space offers is amazing. Right? Yeah, people want this. To me, the kitchen is the mission control of every home. To be perfect for my future renters, this one has to tick a lot of boxes. With some simple but dramatic reconfiguring, I'm transforming this blank space into something sensational. And I'm being super smart about how I spend my money. I want this contemporary kitchen to make a big statement. So I've got a big idea. You've heard of statement lighting, statement pendants, statement jewelry, necklace. I want statement marble. I want a gorgeous, highly veined, something fabulous piece of marble that can act as the backsplash because this whole run of cabinetry has no uppers and it's on full display. Like, I think you're going to be able to see it from the street. So I want this to be like art. So if I get one piece of stone, I can cut it and use it here and on the range elevation and it'll look gorgeous. Back in Toronto, Tommy and I start our sourcing Ooh. Okay, I know marble isn't cheap, but there are a lot of reasons to use it. It's a classic material that never goes out of style. It's a great way to give a luxe look to a simple space, and it's gonna give my rental listing the designer touch it needs. That makes a statement, that blue. Too blue. I find this a little heavy-handed. I can see this for a tabletop, but for the wall, I imagined a little bit more flow. This one has a lot of potential, but I'm worried that you have to kind of commit to a little bit of red lipstick. Look at this. This is amazing. Cool. Aquas, greens, sandy browns. Very soft. I want Very something soft. bolder. Something I, that has more something like More like that. that. I love this. You and I love green. Well, look at it. It has all the other colors, though. Look at all the white. Look at all the gray. Yes, there's green, but green is like the fifth neutral. The counters can be white, and then you just do this. Yeah. Yay, we have our kitchen backsplash. It's just like, bam! Now we're off to look at cabinetry. Here's our wall. Here's all of our options. We've never done this before. We've never picked this part first. But this is actually going to make it really easy, because now what we have to think about is what goes with our backsplash and our contemporary kitchen concept. No. This is a no. no. This is a no. This is a no. no. In my view, you don't have to buy custom to get custom. By choosing in-stock cabinetry, I can get the look I want with no waiting time. And I can invest in designer details that make my vision stand out from the crowd. It's the ultimate kitchen adventure. I think we're no to the wood. Baffled shaker. No. Right? Here's the bonus. You can save up to 60% by using prefab items compared to a custom build. Definitely no to this. This profile here, this too is too trad. traditional for what we're doing. I love this. I door. love this. This is the door I want. Yeah. This door is such great quality for the money. We could paint it and we would see the, the green. Open green. I've always believed that paint is an easy and inexpensive way to give cabinets a customized look. Be sure to prep them properly, though. Give them a good sand and prime, because if you paint over a glossy surface directly, the paint may crack, chip, or peel off. Cabinets made with solid wood components are the best contender for a long-lasting, stunning finish. And I think it will look built, not bought. And I think that will give us a more artisanal look. Okay. This is it. At the office, Tommy and I talk color schemes that coordinate with the marble we selected. The marble is boss. 
See, I was going to say the opposite. Having chosen this green marble, we are trying to make a really dramatic statement. And I think it's the star, it's the anchor, it's the, in my view, it's the everything. Whatever happens next, I mean, it, it has to, it has to cooperate, it has to collaborate, it yes. can't clash. But the marble itself has brown, it has black, gray, white, green, in various shades. The question is, do we take the color out of the marble, or do we just have a color that's adjacent to it? Everything else has to really bow down to this stone. So you want to go really neutral on the cabinets? Yeah. If it seems like I scrutinize every color choice, it's true. This is a big decision, and you have to invest the time to get it right. I always have samples prepped so I can be absolutely certain before I commit to a final paint color. I want to make sure that we preserve the home's original charming details like the window trim in the dining room. But another challenge of working in an older home is the stuff you don't want to keep, like this chip and cracked plaster. So the trouble is, is that this plaster isn't uh, done nicely around these crown pieces. Uh, when we took the wallpaper off, the three layers, it, uh, it shows that it was never sort of done properly. So our options are to cut off the crown, mm -hmm. patch it. Mm -hmm. We could remove them, but they're gonna break. More than likely, yes. More than likely. We could rip off all the trim and replace with brand new trim, which makes it pretty easy to patch. Or we go in and we patch around, we sand, we fill all the holes. Considering the amount of prep work that needs to be done, which do you think is more cost effective? Uh, I think fixing it, because there's only six windows and 12 of these. So going in behind and, and fixing it would be, ch I think, more cost effective overall than ripping them out and putting in new stuff. If it was more cost effective to replace them than to keep them, I would be inclined to replace them. But realistically, we are on a budget. If we can fix them and make them look great and celebrate what we already have here, I think we have to do it. Okay. We're putting a lot of sweat equity into this project. Today, Alex is here to work on the plumbing. This century-old plumbing stack has a crack. So while the plumbing is exposed, we're gonna remove this cast iron pipe and replace it with PVC. It's a gross and smelly job, but someone has to do it. So uh, I get to do this job, eh? Mm -hmm. Replacing the main plumbing stack in an older home can cost up to $4,000. But you never know if or when a corroded pipe will crack or leak. So it's money well spent. Got it? Yeah. Oh, here she comes. Woo! Hey, I got it. All right. See you later, stinky. I'm spending a lot of time looking at the samples I had done for the painted cabinets. And instead of making my choice clearer, I'm having second thoughts about the entire scheme I chose with Tommy. I was worried that the original samples that I got were too dark. So I chose new colors that I was hoping were dark enough, but maybe not dark enough. I think this kitchen is gonna take me forever to design. Not the layout, but the color. A kitchen brings together so many distinct elements. There's appliances, flooring, counters, cabinetry, tile, furniture, lighting, accessories. That's a lot of distinct elements that need to come together and they really have to gel. My idea was choose the marble first and then choose the cabinetry. The problem is the original marble I chose is just too bold. It's too strong, it's too green. I think it's gonna really turn a lot of people off. I know where Tommy stands on this color scheme, but I want to run it by my design associates, Kate and Natalie, for their opinions. The idea is doing slab backsplash. The idea is a slab backsplash. So at first I selected this marble, jade stone, as the backsplash, as a statement. It's bold. That's a statement. <laughs> when you say that, you don't like that statement. You would never just, pick that. I feel like when you go this bold, you have to go that bold all the way. Are you ready to do that? Uh, no. Better to change your mind now than once they're installing it. I always envisioned it as having great veining, great movement. But it can have those things and be a little bit subtler. <laughs> <laughs> Bold design in a rental property just isn't the right way to go. To please the most people and attract the highest number of renters, 
playing on the safe side is a much smarter choice. So it's back to the marble showroom I go. I brought along the cabinet sample in the color I like best, along with the fabric I'm thinking of using. I just know there's got to be a marble out there that will work with both. And as luck would have it... Oh my gosh, look at that. You have all the colors in there. What do you think? I like it because it's consistent. The veins run in one direction, it's very uniform, the flow is nice. Look at this. This is it. Its subtle color works perfectly with my samples. And best of all, it costs just about the same as the green marble. This is it. We're done. This is it. 100%. I need two slabs. The marble drama has come to an end. I've laid out the elements of my new kitchen scheme. Now let's see if old Eagle Eyes Tommy spots the difference. Ooh, why are you going by? What do you think of this? I think that's gorge. Is this a bathroom scheme? Nope. Uh, it's a kitchen scheme. Sorry, this is... What's that smile on your face? This isn't the kitchen scheme. We have a totally different marble in the kitchen, and it's green. Not really. What? No. I thought about it for a really long time. The bold, green, amazing marble is still amazing. I just don't feel like it's amazing in this house. We had a full meeting about the greens being what we were going to derive our cabinetry colors from, and we reserved it. Yeah, we reserved it, but we didn't pay for it. Come on. I think it's time to make a decision that is visually responsible. Because this isn't my house, this isn't your house, this isn't even a client's house that we have the green light on. I have to think about people who might want to rent it, and so based on that, I'm saying no. I get why she decided to default to something that was more universally appealing. I do. But I would 100% do the green marble. Back in Cremor, we committed to replacing all the electrical wiring in the old house, and it was not cheap. This can cost up to $30,000, but it's absolutely essential to do when renovating a heritage home. Our electrical permit allows the homeowner to replace the outdated wiring. So today, Alex is here working on that. In the kitchen and dining room, we've installed all the ductwork and new sound insulation in the ceiling, so now we can seal it up. I'm aiming for continuity between the original house and the contemporary edition, so I'm laying engineered hardwood throughout. This light-stained white oak looks modern, and it's a durable option even for high-traffic areas like the kitchen, so I know it will stand up to lots of use by my renters. And at $5.50 a square foot, I think it's a great deal for a premium product. We're switching the house over to LED lighting. It's the most energy efficient choice out there. Not only do they use less power, but they have better light distribution. We got all the lights we need for $600. The old stairs are getting a facelift. And our cabinetry has arrived. But when we start assembling the cabinets, something's not measuring up. The problem is, this is perfectly level with this side over here. By the time we get over here, the floor is an inch different from that side to this side. So that's the things we're dealing with in old house. When you're renovating an older home, you should always anticipate that the house won't be perfectly level. Fortunately, this is an easy fix. So Chris is just replacing the shorter legs with longer ones. When this is finished, the cabinets will be level and straight, so the imperfections in the floor won't even be noticeable. It's all ready to be assembled and installed. Time for a site visit. <laughs> we got a kitchen! There's what? literally a kitchen in here. What? Ooh, this wee. is crazy. OK. If there's a kitchen, nice. that means there must also be a floor underneath this protective covering. Yeah. We yeah. must have flooring down. Can we peek? Can I don't we know. get, yeah, oh, yeah we a need to spot. peel a corner. Oh, wait. Looks nice. It looks amazing. I'm actually surprised at how sort of compact it feels. Yeah. I was really worried that it was going to feel way too spread out and almost too big. I knew it. No kitchen could ever be too big. With this much space dedicated to the kitchen, I'm aiming for awesome. And that means experimenting with the materials I've selected. I'm always trying to raise the bar higher in my designs, so I'm sketching out a plan to make the island the star of the show. Wait, before you go, yeah. can I grab your opinion on something? 
Here we are, rough sketch of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And this is my plan for the island. Our countertops are being done in quartz. Sure. Right? Yep. So it's going to be a nice light gray. So then I had this idea. What if we took just a tiny strip from the top of the marble and install it along the edge of the counter? So you just see a band all the way around the outside. Exactly. Mitering the accent marble to the face of the counter with a seamless joint will add a luxurious flourish to my island and continue my color scheme throughout the entire kitchen. I actually don't think I've ever seen that before. Well, I know I've never done it before. If it fails, it'll fail miserably. But if it works out, it'll be like th our favorite thing in the whole house. So I'm willing to roll the dice, but it's your money, honey. The kitchen in my turn of the century rental property was just too small. I'm expanding the footprint while trying to maximize the budget. And my number one money saving tip is use big box store cabinetry. The payoff of using an in-stock kitchen is that the component parts are readily available. The price is amazing. And then you can customize it however you want. I'm adding a unique decorative detail to my kitchen island. These thin strips of wood are inexpensive and very easy to install. And we're just mapping out a design as the cladding for the island. So do we like it alternating? I like all the same wide strips. All the same. OK, so fine. We might just need more strips. Like, let's get the narrow strips out of there. And let's do all wide. I want this cladding to end into the waterfall edge that's coming down. It's going to look amazing. Even these often overlooked areas are an opportunity to create some interest and texture. Some cutting, some gluing, and just like that, the ordinary becomes extraordinary. And all for less than $100 in materials. Instead of splashing out on custom cabinetry, these details add the designer touch at a fraction of the cost. Uh, hinges, you got some there? Everyone loves open plan living spaces, but the drawback is they can become cluttered when you're preparing a meal. The benefit of this layout is that the business is tucked away on this wall, so you don't have to tidy everything up before serving your guests. The sightline from the dining table is focused on the gorgeous marble feature wall and the raised storage cabinet. But before we install the marble, it needs to be cut into pieces to use throughout the kitchen. I'll use it as the waterfall wrapping the high cabinet on the island, as the edge profile running along the counter, as the backsplash behind the range, and finally, as my statement piece facing the dining room. Repeating elements with this material gives cohesion to the overall design of the kitchen. And the result is a luxe look for about $2,000 in materials. Okay, that's my marble. Okay, guys. This is my first peek at how the feature marble looks mitered to the edge of the less expensive quartz countertop. I think it's a seamless concept. This is unbelievable. This is blowing my mind. Like, not I'm not trying to like toot toot here, but I've never oh, you seen should. this before. You should. Have you ever seen this before? No, I've never seen that. Toot toot. Now, what we've all been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen, the kitchen star attraction, my feature marble wall. Two, three. For this rental property, I wanted a statement piece that is classic and timeless, but also low maintenance. This is definitely it. I've never struggled with material selection like I did here. Right on. It looks amazing, you guys. I could have gone for the bold jade stone. But by pulling back a little and choosing a slightly subtler slab, I was able to do more with it. I've got this marble as the through line that keeps appearing. It is everything of this kitchen. When it comes to running appliances off the grid, energy efficiency is a key feature, even if it means fewer bells and whistles. This fridge is designed so that there's no beverage center right here. It's inside the fridge. What that does is it's a better insulation. So to keep this cold requires a lot less, less power. We're using propane to heat, which is a really good heat source. And then, of course, we have low flow and efficient faucets, taps. But they've been able to optimize these things so you still have the pressure and you still get lots of good flow. 
but without using a lot of water. Everywhere you look in here is something that's really good for saving energy and going green. I love this kitchen layout, but I've hit a wall with my refrigerator door. Chris? We have a problem here. The post. The handle hits the post. I ordered a counter depth fridge, which is shallower than a standard unit. I made sure we had just enough room for it. But now that it's on site, I see that the half width door needs a smidge of extra clearance. I pinched all the clearances as tight as I could, and clearly I pinched them too far. Because I was trying to max out the counter space, make the cabinetry work, the 36 inch stove. What if we lost two inches off this, this face? Would that? Yeah, or what if we moved it forward a couple inches? That would be it. That would be easy if you could. I don't know if somebody has another suggestion. Luckily, the shallow depth of the fridge means we can move it forward without it becoming too deep beside the counters. When it comes to renovations, there'll always be last minute adjustments. Don't get discouraged. When you've got a great team, the solution can be as easy as a simple fix. Those are the big pieces I need to get installed in the kitchen. Now the pressure is on because the rental season is almost here. We're so close, but we're missing a vent cover and switch plates, and the finished painting hasn't been done, and the stairs aren't done, but they can't paint the stairs until we get rid of the dust in here. Realistically, a lot of this mess is mine. These are my deliveries, so we need to clean this place up. So it's all hands on deck, and those big boxes need to bounce. Even Tommy's tidying up. Take away the garbage. Knew it! Whoa! But I'm definitely the queen of cleaning. She could vacuum endlessly. I think, like, you know how people go and do yoga? I actually think vacuuming is like that to the power of 10 for Sarah. I hate vacuuming. It puts her in a good mood, which makes her totally unique. Because I don't know anyone else on Earth who likes to vacuum. You don't know what you're missing, Tommy. Best thing ever invented. Part of my design philosophy is buy what you love and it will always find a place. I ordered this pendant light months ago and I'm gonna test it out in my new kitchen. Let's see how it's gonna look. Can you hold it up? Yeah, I like that. Look, it's got a gold inside, so it's gonna give a nice glow. I like it so much, I want another one. This bay window nook is the perfect place for my renters to relax with a coffee or a glass of wine. Finding interesting ways to use textiles is a hallmark of my design. So I'm having these chairs covered in a cozy textured fabric. Upholstered furniture isn't something you always see in a kitchen, but is a signature of my design. And I like some comfort amidst all these hard surfaces. But the kitchen is still missing something. The dining room table. Some assembly required. Now we flip this up. And my guess is that this goes like this. Right? It's too easy. This doesn't seem like it's in the right place. We have these nice brackets here, but you see how Sarah's fits so well down there. Oh, yeah, you got her. Um, so. Oh, I told you he was good at tables. Look at that. There you go. Thanks for stopping by. I thought this was our project, and now it's their project. Oh, yeah. We work so well together. It's true. We've got a busy day. I'm squeezing in last-minute paint touch-ups before bringing in the furniture. Works. We need a side table. That's all we need, though. Some window coverings. A glass of Chardonnay, each. Nothing in the bar. No. Do you I like this it. fabric? I'm kind of chenille or velvet. What is this? It's like a velvety chenille. It's really nice. Really nice. It's vanille. This kitchen and dining room offers a variety of seating options. 
bar stools, those upholstered armchairs, and most importantly, dining room chairs. Kitchens and dining rooms are always high traffic areas. So to appeal to groups with children, I chose these durable and well-priced chairs that are easy to clean. Sir, this is a very comfortable dining chair. This is vinyl that looks like leather, which is super kid-friendly. Hey, guests, spill whatever you want, because you know what I can do? Wipe it! I've got all the right pieces, but are they in the right place? The only way to know for sure is to use my favorite exercise, a little furniture ballet. This is the bench you're thinking of. This reminds me of growing up at the cottage. Is it weird? Height-wise, it's perfect. Like, it's classic dining chair height. Would you like it better on the other side? No, because I don't think you'd see it. Like, it, the reason that... You like it here for... To a see bench it. on that side of this room disappears entirely. Just curious. We Could be totally do. wrong. We can do that. Could be totally wrong. We can do that. Flip it up. OK, I'm ready for you to come over and tell me I'm right. Because from right here, I no can see no bench. I know, but I see the bench from here, and there's all this space. Go stand over there and see how much it disappears. You are so... It is no. gone. When you come down the stairs yeah. and you arrive at the bottom yes. of the stairs, okay. it is gone. At the, when you're on the stairs, it's gone, but everywhere else, it's there. The majority of the traffic in this house comes from the kitchen sitting area through this way, or does it come down the stairs and into the living area and kitchen? I'm telling you, I am right about this. <laughs> the idea of having a bench is good. Oh, you want the fact that I'm, like, floating? I'm... You literally look like you're not sitting on anything. I know. I'm levitating. That's great core work right there. Sarah. I'm sending this picture to your mother, and she's going to agree with me. Looks like our furniture ballet has come to a crashing finish. So we shift gears and focus on all the decorative details. I want everything in this room to echo the statement marble. When I'm working with in-stock cabinetry, one of my favorite tricks is to use high-end hardware. Yes, it costs a little more than your standard big box choices, but you get a custom look that elevates the overall design. When I found these marble handles, I knew they'd be perfect in this kitchen, but my design assistant, Ashley, has found a major problem with them. Sarah? Yeah? Hey, what is happening now? I thought they I... were installing this hardware. So unfortunately, they had to stop because every time they tried to install... Shut up. Three times in a row. Literally one, two... No. Three. Same spot. You are kidding me with this. Three in a row. I think then the other negative the... point is that each one is a little bit unique. So the holes aren't exactly five inches apart. Maybe they're five inches and an eighth or a sixteenth or four and 15 sixteenths. Have you ever gone from loving something so much to hating it like that? Well, yeah, I've had one night stands. <laughs> OK, so. <laughs> we are ready to call this project done and then something like this happens. The 11th hour is not the time to start from scratch looking for cabinet hardware when we've already drilled the drawer fronts. I don't have weeks to wait for a replacement to arrive, so I need to find a way to make these work. I don't get angry at a lot of things. I'm kind of angry about this. I know. We're almost finished the kitchen and dining room in my luxury rental property. But we've still got one last problem to overcome. The hardware I chose is proving to be a tad uncooperative. Just that they're so weak. Every company wants their product to work properly. So if you're having an issue, don't hesitate to call them up and ask for help. I'm sure lots of people have been buying these for kitchens. Are you guys aware that this is a problem? To the vendor to get some more information. Turns out the few that broke were just a fluke. So now Chris can get to work finishing up. It would have been easier for me to fix the problem if nobody had already drilled holes. Worse than I thought. Yeah, they're all slightly different widths and bent. So it's going to take some more time than I thought. But it'll be done. When my plan calls for knobs and handles on cabinetry, I always buy extra to allow some flexibility on what goes where. Then, at the end, I can return what I don't use. 
This time, I'm glad I did because we've still got enough to complete all the cabinets. And I'm so relieved. Because I don't really like it when my plans crumble. Now, what I've been waiting for, the finishing touches. These are neat, I like these. Before you can call any renovation done, the space needs a top to bottom deep clean. My open concept kitchen and dining room are finally done. And now it's time to dig into the design with Tommy. Sitting here now, these spaces bear absolutely zero resemblance to what it looked like the very first time I walked in. I don't regret any part of the path we traveled or any change that we made. Yeah, it's a hell of a nice kitchen. Right? But I think the reason why, the reason why we were able to take out all the walls is thanks very much to the way the house was built originally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the joists all came in to a central beam, which is the division between what is now the dining room and the kitchen. Yeah. And all we had to do was reinforce that one element. I don't miss the windows. For me, what's amazing is no matter what time of day, this room never feels dark and it's so beautiful all day long. We wanted this kitchen to be contemporary. I think we delivered on the goal of starting with an available in-stock kitchen and then making it completely customized. And what I like most about it is the custom details. It's the open shelves underneath the cabinets on either side of the cooktop. Open shelving is always a thing that we like in a kitchen yeah. because it allows us to showcase those gorgeous objects, those useful everyday objects, but also things that you believe to hold beauty. It's the vent hood itself, which is so clever, but and so clean. simple. So the idea was having the, the straps, yeah. the slats on the base of the island, on the end gable, mm -hmm. and then on the vent hood. When you're dealing with an adjoined room, if you've got the blue in the kitchen, mm -hmm. you can't just keep going blue, blue, blue. And so the dining room isn't the match, the dining room is the complement, as yeah. it were. Even within the context of a wide open space, yeah. you still have a distinct dining room area and a distinct kitchen area. Mm -hmm. And I like that. The dining room has such a feeling mm -hmm. of space. I mean, I find that the best dining rooms have energy, and this gets its energy from being adjacent to the kitchen, mm -hmm. from art that's hanging on the wall, from the view out to the street. And in the end, I went with all chairs, no bench. I love that that authentic element, that mm. original element in the repainted stairs. Yeah. Is just such a it's such an important part of the house to me. I thought they were so pretty Agreed. since the first moment I stepped in here yeah. that I wanted to celebrate them. Seeing the stairs, the railing and the spindles framed up against the wallpaper, mm -hmm. I think just sets it off and sort of says exactly what this house is about. You did remove a wall, so now we can see them. Right. You used to view them from two feet away, and you're kind of like, oh, a little close. Now you can get back from all the way where I'm sitting and see them for all their beauty. Like, what I love so much about this kitchen is that it is layered. It has stainless steel and glass and metal and two kinds of marble and painted finishes and beautiful details, but it isn't Cluttered. It is about layering with materials rather than layering with things. Every element of this space was designed with my future renters in mind, even when it made decisions tricky, like our statement marble backsplash. You called me a chicken for not using the green that we originally selected. Yeah. This is a safer choice, and the safer choice is sometimes the better choice. It's a total success. This may be the first time I've added a marble detail like this, but I guarantee it won't be the last. I love this. The edge. This entire island, it looks so chunky and so thick. The details, the two tones of marble. This is a triumph. We've ended up with a giant oversized island. Mm -hmm. We still have a seating area. 
So much circulation space, two sinks, two fridges. Massive storage. Massive storage, yeah. amazing appliances, and a huge dining room. Yeah. As I look at the bay window, I think that we've got a pair of contemporary Very sculptural chairs. chairs, you know, with a contemporary side table. The chairs are great, and they are wildly comfortable. Wildly comfortable. I forget what this color was called, but I love it so much that I bought pants that were this color. <laughs> I mean, I actually... They are, let me see. Look at how... Oh my gosh, nailed it. This is for casual entertaining. Yep, this is living the dream. It's like a person that you meet that makes you think, wow, suddenly I feel young again. Right. And this kitchen does that for this old part of the house. Right. The old depended on the new in order to have that new lease on life. Yeah, I guess you couldn't have one without the other. For the past six months, I've ushered this small town heritage home out of a faded past into its glorious future. Oh, good one. Are you sure this is the right size? La, 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 la. I can't hear you. In one rollicking blitz of a reno. That's the shake of doom. Right now, it's terrible. The only way is that, baby. I think it's about to happen. You're so smart. As we go off the grid again. Get it finished. Just a couple hours north of the city, the small town of Creemore has it all, but there are very few places to stay. So I wanted to remedy that by transforming this rundown Victorian into an all season vacation rental. Whoa, look at that. Isn't it cute? It's super cute. I snapped this house up for $350,000. I still think we got an amazing deal, and I know that together we can make it awesome. It was the right price, but the wrong size. The key to a luxury vacation rental home is that it needs enough bedrooms and living space to attract families and groups of friends. I started with a goal of completing it in six months and spending $400,000 to add a two-story addition to double the square footage. Ooh, I feel like I'm in an old antique store. Oh, my God. That said, I've done my fair share of renovations, so I've learned that they usually take longer and cost a lot more money than you planned at the outset. And this one's been no different. <gasps> very, very wet. Definitely gonna need some roof repair. So we're calling about the floors. There isn't uh, enough flooring anywhere to, to patch. Okay, so it's bye bye old floor. It cost way more due to some big expensive surprises and it took a bit longer as a result. Welcome to the money pit, people. For a project like this, I need my A team. My husband Alex and our daughters Robin and Fiona are investing a lot of sweat equity. Wow, look at all that. Our general contractor Ed has been here since we got the keys. What happens next, Ed? What happens next? Well, we want to put all the second floor joists up today. And of course, my right-hand man and day husband, Tommy, has been my partner in this grime every step of the way. Seems like we're in this together. Now this 1,000-square-foot Victorian home that was once made up of tiny separate rooms has transformed into 2,500 square feet of contemporary open space that sleeps eight. When we bought this house, it was buy one, get one free. There's a barn at the rear of the property that was built just over 100 years ago. It's a bit run down, but still structurally sound. It's like, huge. When, when in town do you get a barn on the property? I am not gonna be the person to tear this barn down. I think it's amazing space. It's bonus space. We have a house that's not huge and a barn that is original and authentic and awesome. But it's also in need of a fix up. Now you're talking. Months ago, Tommy and I came up with a plan. Wow, this is really authentic. Like there were some animals chewing on that little area there. Right? And then in here, okay, well this is pretty great. This is big. Is this gonna be the garage? I don't know. Couldn't you make it a cool summer living dining pavilion? I don't know. Oh, maybe. I like make it into like a dining, drinking, lounging, hanging. It's a playhouse, maybe for adults. To give my rental guests even more spaces to spread out and enjoy, on the main floor of the barn, I'll retrofit the stables to fashion a bar and serving area. And next to that, I'll have a large table for al fresco dining. On the upper level, I'll lay new floors and open up the space with windows to bring in the breeze and loads of natural light. 
I'll use practical indoor-outdoor furniture and a simple color palette to create a playhouse atmosphere where adults and kids alike can escape and unwind in rain or shine. Most importantly, this is the bonus feature of this property and will take my rental listing from country charming to over-the-top hotspot. First things first, I launched Operation Cleanout. I got the whole gang on board to do a gut job on the barn. Since my goal for this project is to be a lean, green designing machine, I recycled a few items. These get recycled? I think so. Salvaged some old gems. Well, here's my dining table. And Ed took the rest. Now that we've gone out with the old, I'm meeting with Charlotte and Ed to see how we can usher in the new. We can't afford to just say, oh, Money's no object. Money is always an object. I basically look at this barn as gift with purchase, and I think it's a really neat space, but we're spending all our money on the house. We still have all the landscaping to do, the porch to rebuild, decks, planting, sod, driveway, everything else. So the list of to-dos is long, but I feel like we have to do something in here. We definitely need to get a beam in mid-span on these floor joists. Yeah. And that header over that door, I don't know Sagging if I would lot. trust that big split in it right now. What can we do to fix this floor, Ed? You reuse these boards? Yeah, we could. We could pressure wash these boards all off and relay them again. It would look great. The floor isn't the only thing I'll try to salvage. So we found this door upstairs, so we can turn this into a dining table. Nice. Very nice. And then I was thinking, this is the original screen door. What if we cut it off here, ripped out the screen, and then we could turn it into a nice mirror? We could mount it outside. I know. Uh, something with mirrors, you're not supposed to have any reflection out. Not I, I think that's a load of feng shui. Oh. <laughs> so the other thing is we have my whoopsie, I made a mistake see on this window. Every renovation has a few missteps. And one of the first ones on this project was this custom window I ordered. When it arrived, it just didn't work. I can't see anything. The barn is gone. Custom windows can't be returned, so I stuck this albatross in the barn. Now I'm hoping to find a new home for it here. Come, let's go upstairs and figure out where we can put this. Okay. The upper level is hot and dark, so that window will transform this space. Reusing material makes sense and saves sense. At this stage of my reno, every penny counts. So we're just going to cut a big hole in this wall to fit that window. Okay. Slip the window in, add a few corner braces to keep the wall from shaking. Nice. And then we saved all this rough barn stuff. If I can put some corner braces in with some of these pieces. They'll look like they've always been there. What would you do here? So if we got this floor leveled up and tightened all these boards up, we could cover it with plywood. It's easy to sweep, it's easy to clean, and you're still going to see the, the boards from below. Most importantly... All of this dirt doesn't keep falling in your glass of wine when you're having that dinner party Friday night. Right. Sounds like Friday night can't come soon enough. You know what they say, when one window closes, another one opens. Hey, how are you doing Great. Even if it used to be a wall. Sometimes good design really is a breeze. A few months ago, Alex and I purchased a modest heritage home and we're transforming it into a luxury vacation rental. You got the eye, lady. You should do this for a living, you know? You think? We've gone to town on the interior of the house. So what's left? We're getting so close to the end that it's finally the turn for the barn. I love barns. I love old barns. Who doesn't love a barn? We're turning this one into a one-of-a-kind clubhouse for kids and adults to take this rental over the top. Back in the city, I start searching for furniture. With a space this rustic, we need to choose carefully. Too new will stand out. Anything too fancy just won't fit in. But we don't want it to be too themey either. Full of restraint, Tommy and I hit the vintage shops. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Look who I found. What about these things, Sarah? They're vintage saddle horses. Oh, well, that's cool. There's so many things about them that are cool. The numbers, the patina. You could use these as a table place. <gasps> these would be great as legs for the door I want to use as the tabletop. When you make a base like this, you need to know that these two aren't going to move. Because if these move at all, when somebody cuts, the whole table goes. Right. So these are totally sturdy. Every design scheme needs an accent color, and nothing suits a barn better than red. 
Creating my own table with my salvage door and these saddle horses will give it one-of-a-kind charm, and it'll fit beautifully with the rest of the barn. While we've got the barn on the brain, my colleague Natalie and I scour the local shops in search of charming barn decor. We're keeping our eyes peeled for accents in rich red tones. Oh yeah, that's got rustic charm. I uh -huh. love these old flower sacks. They're great. Milk paint. What about that door that we love and can't find a home for it? Ooh. Well, DIY. Well, what if we painted it and then we, we could hang it as art? Yes. I like this red. The barn isn't the only thing that needs a refresh. The exterior of the house will be the first thing people see, and I want to give my renters a fabulous first impression with curb appeal. To maintain some of the original Victorian charm, I'll restore the front porch, keeping all of its original woodwork intact. This door in the addition is now the main entrance, so I'll add a covered porch for practicality and street presence. In the backyard, I'll create a basic platform deck where guests can enjoy the fresh greenery and take in the view of the barn. With that plan in place, Ed and I discuss an affordable yet durable option to upgrade the exterior of the house. Traditionally, Victorian homes were painted with lighter colors on the woodwork and trim, but I've chosen to go with a dark slate gray that gives this house a contemporary look and will make it stand out in our rental listing. These wood sills, they're not in bad shape, but we have a few options. We can take these out, install new concrete sills, which would last forever, or we could strip them and repaint them, which would need painted every year. But by the time we strip this, sand it, prep it, prime it, paint it, paint it again, to me, it's a maintenance issue, because we can strip all this off and put product on here that it's supposed to last for years, but it never does. Or we can wrap them in aluminum as we would all the old brick mold. We bend this all up nice to fit over this sill. It's a really it's nice job. It's crisp, it's nice. The match to the windows is perfect. This starts looking like a pretty good option. This will last forever. Cap them. These upgrades will serve me well for years to come. Want to know what else will serve me well down the line? Solar power. While we're still tied to the grid, we're not solely dependent on it. The panels generate energy that can be used when it's produced, and the excess is stored in the batteries. If we need more energy than what's coming out of those panels, the battery supplies it. When there's not enough sunshine, the system buys energy from the grid when it's at the cheapest rate. Finally, if the sun's shining on the panels and no energy is being consumed, once those batteries are fully topped up, the excess is sold back to the grid, and that's literally winding the meter back. We spent $20,000 on our solar package, which will reduce our energy bills significantly. We can have this system paid off in about five to seven years, all while being good to our planet. So right now we're looking at the system that we've installed online. So this is kind of like looking at your data plan, but for power, so you can see how much you're using, how much you're saving. And, but the best part is that with the solar and the batteries, unlike your data plan, you can actually work the hydro bill down. Well, that's exactly it. How much power we're consuming, how much we're producing. So right now, what this is telling us is that we are using zero energy from the grid, mm -hmm. and the battery system is providing 400 watts to power everything that's on in the house. At 7 o'clock this morning, we were consuming power at the same rate as we were buying power. At around 8.30, that's when the system went active, and you can see there's a hard line where we stopped buying power from the grid. And what I really like is at 9 o'clock, there's no red bar at all. So we're running completely on the power systems in the house, and that's just the battery. I'm going to grab a vacuum cleaner or something like that, okay. plug it in, and we'll see it happen here. OK, so see? right now we're drawing 400 watts. Let's see how high we can crank it. All right, let me plug this thing in. And yeah, look at that, 0.8 kilowatts. That's pretty cool. I love the fact that that's real time. That's super neat. Since this is a rental property, we can actually see how our renters may be consuming power and adjust it to meet their needs a little bit better. Absolutely. Cool. And the sunny, happy vibes just keep on coming. This is like the nicest day of the entire year, isn't it? Beautiful out here. We're adding two outdoor features to our exterior, a back deck and a porch at the new front door. I reoriented the entire house to make the entry into the addition the primary entrance. Ed and I meet to review the plans. Some nice posts and a gable to support a roof. 
that keeps the snow from falling on your head. Exactly. The rain. I think that's perfect. But it's easier said than done. When you're renovating an older home, new additions have to meet the current building code. And if you think standards have changed, you'd be right. So the original house porch is sitting on one cement block. To build this porch, we're going to have to go down I nine know. feet. I know. That's been there a hundred A tale years. of then and now. OK. By enlisting the free services of my Minister of Exteriors, I'll save about $1,000 in labor. Now that's a whole new kind of money pit. After a hundred years of gravity, this barn could use a little pick-me-up. This floor has a huge sag in it. This is a little beam actually out of the old addition. We found it supporting the floor in the old addition. So Alex pulled it out mm -hmm. gently and we saved it. So now we're just going to throw it in here to pick up some of this weight. I like that sound. You guys good if I hit it? Yep. We're raising the roof with some good old-fashioned manpower. Just as Ed finishes up, Tommy arrives like a breath of fresh air. But instead of appreciating our hard work on the barn, what Tommy has to say just flat out stinks. It smells like decades of all kinds of different animal I think I know the root of the problem. Oh boy. Hi, buddy. Hi. Things I'm going to be researching tonight after work, relocation of a possum and a raccoon without hurting them or welcoming them back. Got any tips? We're in the home stretch of our off-the-grid vacation rental in the small town of Creamore. And that means my budget is also stretched to the max. But I've still got to finish the house exterior and the turn of the century barn. My goal from minute one with this barn was to see how we could fix it up by spending almost nothing. This barn has been an animal flop house for over 100 years. We've shuttered the joint for good, safely relocating the last inhabitants. And now that we've cleared the air, we can lay the floor. I want the second floor of the barn to be a hideaway, a getaway, and a playhouse for kids and adults alike. The original floors were in major disrepair, so we're screwing down new plywood sheets over top. For less than a thousand bucks, this is a cost-effective solution, and it seals up the cracks, ensuring dust-free dining below. On the main floor, my plan to transform this space into an indoor dining area starts with removing and cleaning the original floorboards so we can reuse them. And my only investment in this will be some sweat equity. We're putting our pressure washer to the test in an attempt to revive these old, dirty boards. Whoa! This is the only kind of pressure that's fun to handle. So some of that oil's not gonna come out, I don't think. I think what we need now is we need an approval. Okay, so the girls Woo. have been busy. It looks like they're coming a lot cleaner. Can we get it clean all the way to the bottom? I'm not sure we're going to be able to get them 100% clean. It's like, do you think that people are going to like want to go in the barn if it's smelling like oil tar and there's like black stuff all over the boards? Mommy's goal is to make it so you do want to spend time in there. She's Mommy just to wants out the it way. to work. <laughs> Today's one of those days that I feel like I set a goal and maybe it was a bit ambitious. I think nobody but me is into this project. No one actually. I sort of am. I'm not really feeling it. I don't know whether you maybe just want to just go for some rough cut pine and call it a day. Or go for some lunch. Tommy's gumbling. You're hungry? You're hungry? You're hangry. So shall we talk? You're hangry, very hangry. I've got an idea. Why don't we think about this over lunch? <laughs> yeah. Sure enough, when we get back at it, Ed has a surprise for me and my floorboard dilemma. There's quite a few boards uh, left over from the siding from the addition. So I do have quite a stack of the one by 12 pine. So, so I had my kids trying to wash oil and grease off old boards. And meanwhile, we had the wood. Oh yes. my gosh, I'm going down in the Mean Mom Chronicles. It turns out we have enough surplus lumber to replace the oil-stained boards with leftover siding. That means a new floor without spending a dime. And that has me jumping for joy. Meanwhile, the new front entrance is coming together. While they're busy building, out front, we're bricking up the extra original front door and making it into a window. To maintain the original aesthetic, we're reusing the brick that we removed from the back of the house to fill in this doorway. Our bricklayer is working hard to match the original pattern perfectly. 
we're recycling and restoring. And now, it's time for Tommy and me to rethink the plan for the original Victorian porch. We are trying to reorient traffic here, away from that door and over to the side door, which is now the front door. What if you took the railing that's on the side and actually just continued it right across the front of this porch? So no steps, just lattice around the base. You could landscape around this so that there's no walkway up to it. Thereby rendering that porch nothing other than a breakfast moment balcony, right? And it wouldn't take anything away from the historic nature of the exterior of the house. You know what it means when I say absolutely nothing? It means you're considering it. Closing off this porch with a railing solves the issue of the awkward second entrance in one simple move. That's a bold idea. <laughs> you love a bold idea. I need to chew on that. I need Can to I go home that. now? Because as we know, I'm good for one good idea per day. No, you got, you got a long day ahead of you. I've, I've already done my you. one good idea. With that, I head home to spend time with my family and do some indoor shopping for outdoor furniture. Can I see? Sure you can see. Come have a sit. You can do a search. Here's what's really cool. We go to the home, type in what you think we're looking for. Outdoor chairs. This is, this is what I love about this, is we can filter this. We know that we want them black and metal. I'll do it, I'll do it. Okay. Black metal patio. See, patio. these are nice. These are a set of two. Whoa, we like right these. Those. These yeah. are pretty cool looking. One last thing we can do is if you hit filter again, yep, yeah, and then you scroll down and you can see it has delivery options. So you can click the button that says in stock. Great. And then it'll only tell us what's available in the color we want, in the material we want that is ready to ship to us immediately. Instant gratification is the best. My husband Alex and I invested in a small town home that we're transforming into a luxury rental property. This is blowing my mind. Toot toot. We're so close to the end. Today, our bargain bin floors are going down. The best part about this flooring is that it was free. Why was it free? Because we had to order all the siding we needed to cover the addition. And then they had to go through and they sorted out all the boards that had too many knots. So these are the reject boards. These are the boards that Ed deemed not good enough to go on the side of the house. But that rustic look will be perfect as the barn floor. Using leftover materials keeps our cost down and reduces our waste. Upstairs, the plywood floor is getting a facelift. Plywood is cheap and easy to install. We're giving it a durable paint finish to ensure that there'll be no pesky splinters. This is so much brighter. Wow. And you know what's also cool? What? There's multiple ways to get up here, right? You can take the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> or, okay. or the escalator. While we wait for the floors to dry, Alex gives Tommy a lesson in operating heavy machinery. So how do you stop it? Oh my God. If I want this property ready for a summer party, I need to start thinking about furniture. Remember these? What about these things, Sarah? What are they? They're vintage saddle horses. This needs some paint. But let's just see if it works. This was a tall door. With my saddle horses on site, Ed and I test out the old door that I salvaged as a tabletop. It may be free, but that's all it's got going for it. It's just not wide enough. No one wants to smash their leg into the side of the saddle horse. That's not really going to work. We're going to need a bigger top. I don't want to abandon these saddle horses. They're a real rustic statement and the jumping off point for my red accent color. So I'm gonna scrap the idea of that old free door and have a tabletop made. Fortunately, these leftover sliding boards are the gifts that just keep on giving. I don't think it'll take Chris more than an hour to make me a table, and it's a little bit of time to paint it. And paint is the key to creating curb appeal. The front porch will be the first thing my guests see, so I wanna make sure it's perfect. This isn't the first, the second, the third, the fourth, or even the fifth color we sampled on the exterior. Look at this blue, gorgeous color. And I'm hoping that this is the final one. This colonial inky blue is a custom blend. It's a traditionally inspired color that I'm using to give this house a fresh contemporary look. Here's a fun fact. 25 years ago today, I was probably doing exactly this, which helped me 
pay my university tuition. I used to paint houses during the summer holidays. Back in the day, this was how I made money. Now, this is how I save it. This property wouldn't be complete without a spacious back deck to lounge on. So today, the team is busy building a simple platform. Building a deck doesn't have to break the bank. We're using pressure-treated lumber and designed this to make sure there aren't any wasted pieces, which is smart if you've got your eye on the bottom line. Once the footings are level, the deck comes together fast. Fastest deck building I think I've ever seen. We only need one last detail, steps. Can we go all the way side to side? Well, do we want to go side to side, or do we just want to come to the edge of the door here so we could potentially have a nice planter? I kind of like the idea of just being able to be parking on this step and having a beer. And going you want out. full step? Yeah, I think so. I like the idea of the steps coming out to here. OK, full width, two full widths. But can we take the next one in a little bit? Yeah. I find it always looks kind of ugly from the side if, if they're just lined up. Fine. If you want to be enjoying a beer, we got to get building these stairs. OK, let's go. The beauty of a small town is that you get to know your neighbors. This bike is so cute. You can take it for a ride if you want. Can I? Yeah. OK, I'm taking the Miami Sun for a spin. Awesome. I'll be back. Uh, Here, let me give you a hand. Sweet. You guys have been working. Whoa! No, that's it's how you deliver a beer. Right? Now. That was yeah, literally, like, literally the last screw. We just finished Good that timing. Thing, yeah. That is the last screw and the last step, and you've earned a chilly one of these. This is the deck christening. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, nice. Nicely done on the deck, gang. Cheers. Cheers. I didn't think you could do this deck that fast, but I tell you, I've been proven otherwise. My small town rental home is nearly complete. This house can sleep eight people, so to give renters more space and make it stand out in the listings, we're sprucing up the barn to create a spectacular three-season clubhouse and dining space. We're also tackling the exterior, and I've challenged myself to find the smartest ways to stretch my budget. We got a mostly free floor in the barn by reusing the pine planks left over from the siding install. Now the floors are laid, so I'm giving them some Sarah style. I like the idea of just sort of giving it a bit of character. Have I mentioned how much I love Sanders? Focusing the sanding on the edges and areas with knots gives these boards a more rustic look. That will help them match the weathered look of the rest of the barn. Can you just hold all my calls? I'll be here for the rest of the day. Some people find meditation soothing. For me, Nothing beats the payoff of quality time spent with a sander. It's what I like to call restoration therapy. After sanding, we applied water-based urethane to protect the floors, and they look amazing. This is a transformed triumph. I would do this in a cottage. Like, look at this floor. This is a great rustic floor. This little extra touch of sanding the boards to just reveal a bit of character is what now makes it look so special. I love the fact that this floor was free. That's tremendous value. Today, instead of interior design, we are doing exterior design. We're at the nursery today to select all of our plant material for our landscaping plan. When it comes to landscaping a rental, a low maintenance plan is best. I really like a monochromatic, simple structured approach, partly because I'm a really busy person. I don't have all the time in the world to spend gardening and weeding and playing with the plants. So I want to put them in the garden. I want to watch them grow and thrive. I want them to look amazing and I want them to need as little of my attention as possible. I brought my mom along and Tommy. My mom has always been an incredible gardener. She has fantastic plant knowledge, so I wouldn't ever consider doing this without her. Tommy's just here for the ride. We're trying to balance and counterbalance a historic home mm -hmm. with a contemporary flavor. Mm -hmm. So what's the best choice for that? Well, the lavender right now is stunning. Behind you as well is the Russian sage. This has more presence, you know, in right. terms of the height of and the intensity of the purple. And more dramatic right. than the lavender. You always think a drama situation is better. So I like that's good. OK? I'm with you, Tom. We're going to go for drama. Yes. I chose hardy perennial flowers and plants. 
They'll look great in the photos for my rental listing, and they return year after year. So every season, my guests will arrive to a house that's just as the pictures promised. These just in front of us are the phantom hydrangeas. I think that's probably what you're looking for. OK, hydrangeas. OK, what's next? Lilacs? Um, yes. Let's lilacs. look at lilacs. We think we need something showy in front of the bay window. Lilacs are a wonderful choice. Tag her. Let's okay, take her home. So old. Now it's time to get these babies in the ground. Planning and planting ourselves is saving us some serious green. Ed and his guys are prepping the whole backyard for sod. And my mom and I are going to plant the garden today with some help from Alex. Are we going to be able to get all this in today, do you think, Mom? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Definitely. First up, lilacs. When it comes to location, you want to get it right. So we put them just off the corners here. So like here and there. Not everybody has access to a backhoe and a guy to run it, but many nurseries offer helpful services like delivery and custom landscaping. Horsepower, manpower. They say many hands make light work. It's true, but only if you pay attention to what you're doing. <laughs> hey, you just threw that right in my boot. Yeah, yeah, make it up. Eventually, these three lilacs planted in front of the bay window will provide loads of privacy for our guests. And they come with a lovely scent in the spring. To stay true to the Victorian heritage of this home, I'm using flowers that would have grown in this area during the time period. Hasta, hasta, hasta. I think we're all about to get a refreshing shower. And right on cue, Mother Nature gives the garden a good soak. <laughs> a little rain's not stopping Alex. But sometimes you have to know when to ask for a rain check. Months ago, this was a shack packed with junk. But we cleared it out, cleaned it up, opened up the spaces, added new floors, and created a whole new entertainment space. And I'm sprucing up a couple of the original storm windows with the milk paint I bought. The dirty work is done, and it's time for the finishing touches. This looks good. We transformed this heritage barn from a shabby storage space into a chic outdoor playground that's truly one of a kind. This barn is original to this property, and I've always said that it was the gift with purchase. We have to remember this was a functioning barn. And livestock used to live in here. It smells purdy now. You and I are always tuned in to this idea of mood and experience. And yes. I think to have a destination that works, mm. it has to have a unique flavor. Yeah, it has to have a mood that you can't experience in the house. The whole feel of this for me is the clubhouse. We found the saddle horses, and then they've set the tone for everything else. Yeah, the red. When you choose a bold color like red, I think the fear is that it's going to get too themey. Yeah. But you know what? It is a barn. So why not celebrate it? Let it be themey. It also feels festive. Yeah. And this is an entertaining space. I love the fact that we have the serving counter. If you're going to actually entertain out here, mm -hmm. you need to bring some stuff out. Like this is where you want your friends to come over, a family reunion. Party on. I love this floor. I think this would make a great cottage floor. It's incredible. You can vacuum it, you can mop it, you can sweep it. Plus, for the whole off-the-grid approach, this is about not wasting any material. Reuse, recycled, or upcycled. The cost, if you wanted to do this, would be $300 Come on. for this flooring. One of the best features of the barn is probably one of the worst features from the house. <laughs> the disaster window that was so bad in the principal bedroom Suddenly, being able to look out and the air coming through and the light coming in, that's when it's like, oh my gosh, I want to be up here. Yeah. The charcoal gray tones in the outdoor rug and furniture complement the painted floors and the barn board walls. Outdoor furniture is durable and comfortable. Add a few throw pillows and that practical choice looks as pretty as an indoor living room. It doesn't just look good, it feels good. 
you have this sense of outdoor life, we are in a barn that has a harvest table and a breeze flowing through it. This is usable, livable, practical space. Sitting in here, it makes me feel exactly as I wanted to. I feel relaxed, I feel happy, I feel ready for a glass of wine. I feel like I want to come back. Right? This is such a different experience than anything we have anywhere else in the house. Absolutely. Our vacation rental property is all but done, and it's time to celebrate. Before we call this complete, let's take a step back to where it all began. We chose to invest in this small town because we knew it had loads of amenities year-round that would appeal to renters. We got the house for a steal, and that low purchase price gave us a bigger budget to invest in upgrades. A basic box addition doesn't have to break the bank, and it's an excellent way to get more space without having to move. If you're renovating an older home, this is the simplest way to make a dramatic change on a budget. With the help of my A-team, I managed to save a lot on labor. Our easy addition afforded us enough space to create a serene principal bedroom and ensuite at the back of the house. We also managed to sneak in a bonus bunk room that sleeps too and doubles as an office. In the original structure, we gave the two bedrooms a facelift and gave the family bathroom a complete gut job makeover to make a great guest space. On the main floor, we opened up the Victorian floor plan. Let's wreck some stuff. The girls helped take down the walls. Whoa! And now we have an exquisite kitchen and dining room. In the kitchen, we invested $2,000 for the room's defining feature, a marble backsplash. But we saved a bundle on the standard size big box store cabinetry. In the addition, we built a mudroom and a powder room for the convenience of our guests. And a beautiful living room for apres ski lounging. We splurged on our patio doors, but the payoff of the view and outdoor access is well worth it. The basement wasn't on the original plans, but I couldn't imagine the house without it now. For a room without windows, it's one of the brightest ideas we had. The stunning glass railing in our basement was a $10,000 splurge, but it allowed us to bring light into the room and block out sound. And the pièce de résistance of great savings, our vinyl floor, which only took an hour to install. Along the way, we invested in the essential systems, adding a new high-efficiency furnace for about $25,000, a new water heater for $1,500, and new electrical, which ran us $30,000. All new HVAC, all new plumbing, all new electrical, new roof, new windows, new insulation. It needed it. It needed everything. This yes. is everything. A metal roof is a premium material. And By its, its very nature. Significantly more expensive than an asphalt shingle roof. Yes. However, metal roofs offer a greater return on investment. They reduce your energy use while increasing the value of your home. Driving past this house, you would likely never notice that there are eight solar panels on the roof. We have four days of backup power in the event of an Zombie outage. apocalypse. Right. This is thinking down the road. It's also about actually feeling good about the planet and about feeling good about your community. You can create that off-grid independence while still being tied to, to the town. community. Capital investments like these can be added to your mortgage while you reap instant rewards with free energy, reduced utility bills, the knowledge you're greening your home, and the security that if the power goes out, you won't be in the dark. I don't think I was ever extravagant. I was Not trying once. to recycle materials that we found on site. I was trying to use salvage materials, vintage materials, affordable materials. This wasn't a cheap and cheerful makeover. I worked hard to find a clever design scheme that would appeal to everyone. And wherever possible, I dressed up average in-stock parts, transforming the ordinary into the extraordinary. We also saved big on some DIY projects throughout the house. By using spare pieces and surplus wood, we were able to create architectural details for a lot less than store-bought. This is one of Sarah's best projects ever. May not be her biggest, but I'd say it's her best. It's time for Tommy and me to do a final survey of our work. We had some challenges, but look at what we've ended up with. Since we've reached 
the finish line. We can look at the old house, we can look at the addition, we can look at the barn, and we can see this picture all together. Now I feel like they each have their own personality, but they do relate to each other. We have the historical reference in the brick. That is the stately element. For sure. And I like the grounding element of the dark color palette. Our graphite window trims, door trims, and roof color, downspouts, eaves, everything else, fascia, I think all of that was just a, like, home run. Yeah, it's like we took something that was frilly Victorian traditional, mm -hmm. and we did something a bit more punk. Like, yeah. we gave it just a little bit more of an edge. You know what I think one of the biggest game changers on the exterior is? What? Your idea of decommissioning that front door and making it just a balcony instead of an entryway. I was trying to understand and work out in my own head how to funnel people to the correct entrance. But it also opened up the opportunity to really let the landscape shine. The spacious covered side porch means guests can drive right up and unload their car directly into the house. As an added bonus, it's large enough that guests can sit out and have a coffee, rain or shine. We have the freshness and the contemporary twist of the addition. In terms of the siding, I mean, it doesn't get any cheaper than rough sawn barn paneling. This is a dollar a linear foot yeah. for 12 inches wide. And then we splurged on our big garden our incredible door. incredible moment off the living right? room with a wonderful dream of indoor-outdoor living in the country. Without those doors, you don't have that. In just one day, we built a simple platform deck where guests can take in the view of the barn and backyard landscaping. With a super simple design, we created some major outdoor appeal. Based on the local market and the number of guests we can sleep, I estimate I can get $2,500 a week for this vacation rental. To get people excited about it, I'm going to drum up some word of mouth and host an open house. We want everything to look as good as it possibly can. We want to make the best first impression, OK? OK. The open house is starting in five minutes. So now we open the doors and we let everybody come in and see what they think. Wow, this is lovely. Oh, I love the colors. Oh. The entryways have this pretty stepping stone into the house, and it's just so pretty. For something that's so open concept, it is warm and cozy and inviting. The paper, it's texture, it's gorgeous. Wow, it's just spectacular, but that's really amazing. I would never think of anything like this. I mean, that's why she's a beautiful, she's a decorator and I'm not. Oh, that must be the original basement Yeah, isn't something? I love the idea of the marble being on the walls. Brilliant. I love the fact that she's left the original trim. It's very contemporary, but it still holds that old world feel. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. This is, yes, this I like. Oh, I love this. Yes. It's beautiful. You get the colors. I personally think we did right by the old house. We celebrated and uplifted and reinvigorated everything we could. So pretty. So so pretty. And now we've created something new. I think the old house would be happy. That one looks amazing. They look awesome. Check this out. Uh-oh. OK. I mean, what do you think? It sounds like you might want to do something else. Wouldn't this be kind of a fun project for all of us to do? Of course it would be. What do you, what do you think? What do you think of this? That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so not for what it looks like right now, but do you think this has, what do you think? Do you think this has potential? Yeah. yeah. You're good on demo. You're good on cleanup. Daddy's good outside, I'm good inside. Aren't we just like the ultimate team?